Hello and we are back. So let's finish up with our admin section, right? So here we must begin creating products or adding products to our our list. So uh, I've written down here what we need for our table because we need to create a products table. And so we will need a product description, a category that it belongs to, and the price, the quantity, and then images. So we're going to add like four images per, um, per product. So the first image will be compulsory, but the rest of them will be optional. And then we will obviously have a date because we want to know when that product was added. Okay, so we may want to know who added the product as well. So we're going to have user uh, ID. Now, in our case, if I go to my uh, eShop DB and go to the users table, you see that we don't really have a user ID. We just have this URL address, which determines which user that is. Okay, so most of you uh, were asking why I don't use this ID, the primary index ID as the key to determine uh, to identify users, for example, why do I need this extra identifier here? Now, the reason I don't use primary key is because sometimes, uh, to start with, if if IDs like this determine uh, the ID of the user, if you have, let's say, ID number 100, for example, somebody just by looking at your URL will know that uh, you have at least 100 users on your site. So that could be information you don't want uh, to give out to people. And then they will also know that if they type any number below that, let's say they put uh, in their profile, they say ID is equal to 50, they're going to be able to see, at least they'll get a profile there. Regardless, they can just go randomly there and get a, a, a profile there. But by having this randomly generated number, it's... Um, it's very difficult for somebody to just guess this and find a random profile by manipulating your URL. And then the final reason is that if, for example, I want to migrate this uh, particular table to some other table, let's say I have users in here, I have like five users in here, and then I have another table where I have 10 users and I want to merge both of those. I'm going to have a problem because the primary index cannot be repeated, right? and it has to be in sequence. So you find that on the other table, there could be an ID user of two, right? And here there's also another ID user of two. So this is exactly the same number as in the other table. So it's going to be very difficult to merge the two tables because if I do change the ID here, just to, uh, to suit the idea that primary index cannot be repeated, then what happens is that whatever products were associated with this particular index of this user will be uh, no longer attached to this particular user, but the other one that has remained with the ID of two. So in the real world, I just found that uh, in my experience while dealing with real websites, I just found that using a separate ID is actually a better idea for scaling. So whether you agree with me or not, uh, you can use a different, you can use the primary index as your ID. That's good, that, 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 that's fine. Uh, we will not argue about that. It's just that my personal experience, this is much better. So in here, what we will do is, um, now that we have that out of the way, so user ID here, we will just say user URL at the end here, we'll say user underscore URL. This will represent the user that actually posted uh, this product here. But for categories here, we will need a categories table because for us to post a product, we need to have categories. So which means we must start with this one. We must have these before we can post that. So let's create both tables first and then we can deal with adding categories first and then we can add a few products. So let's go ahead and click on new to create a new table. Okay, so there we go. Uh, 
categories. It's a good idea to keep uh, these uh, tables in plural form, categories. And then let's add our ID primary index. So as usual, uh, the same thing would apply to uh, the categories here. If I want to add a special ID, I could do that. But I think for the sake of having uh, two different versions of this, I will leave the, this one, the primary index, as the primary identifier for categories so that you can see how that version of things would work as opposed to when we are using the user URL. So ID and category name, that's category. And that should be it for our category because we don't need to know any more information about our category when, when it was created and so forth. So uh, this is much better. Now, the reason we need an ID uh, for a category is if we change the category name, then all our links are no longer connected to that. So we still are going to be able to know it's the same category because of the ID. So here, we're not going to have many IDs, uh, many categories here that will overflow in the int category. So we'll leave this one as an just a simple int because this is quite a large number. And then here we'll put variable character because we want to be able to type in a category name. Now it's very, it's not good to have very long category names. So I will put our character count maybe at 30 or you can use 20. Uh, that will still do just fine. So I think that does it unless we click on auto increment on ID and make sure we set it as the primary index and uh, that ought to do it. Now, sometimes we will be uh, searching using the category name. So hit save here. So we go to the next and then category. Let's add an index here for category so that we can be able to search using the category name itself. And that is awesome. So that does it for our categories table. Now let's go to our products table and create products. So there we go. Now here we will need an ID, as I said here, and wrong text editor. So user URL address, okay. Let's put that there and then uh, okay, so right here, because you see when products are being uh, viewed, let's let's go back to our website here for a second. Um, let me remove this. Okay, whatever there. So here, when, when the user is browsing uh, our products, they will have to click uh, to view more details on our product. Now, when we go to that page, there are two things we could do here. We could have an ID represent the uh, product, uh, the product we're accessing, sorry. So that when I click on single item, like uh, where is this single blog, products, product details. So this is a page I'm talking about. Oh, sorry, uh, we don't have a controller for that. So we can't see that unless we go to our theme itself. So let me go to that theme right there. It's eShop. Let me just open up the, uh, where is the single blog, single product details. Yeah, so product details right there. So I'll open this with uh, Firefox. There we go. So this is our product details. Now, what, I, what would be nice for SEO or search engine optimization on Google is instead of showing an ID for a product in the link there to determine which product we should get, it would be better to actually show the text of the product itself. So like in this case, uh, this is an sleeveless color block scuba. So it could be nice that this text is inside our URL instead of an ID of this product, right? Now that item is called uh, a slug. That's what the, uh, the name I'm, I'm used to hearing, especially for WordPress users, it's called a slug. So that way, what will happen is you have a URL like this. Let me come to my text editor here. So it's going to be like your website.com and then it says product like that. And then 
there's some text like this of course we will put some hyphens there and so on now the advantage of doing this is because google will index your pages on your website right so if somebody is searching for sleeveless uh, scuba something like this immediately the url is going to because google will search for the url that might have that text and then it might find yours so that will rank it higher than if for example it was just like product 15 something like this because in this case you don't know what this product what product is on this particular page it's very difficult to know that using that id so we are going to need a slug so this is one thing i forgot here so we'll say slug there that's what we will call it so the items here are about uh, let's say one two one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven hmm so here we have one two three four so let's add some more to make eleven should be seven i think if my math serves me right so let's add the rest of it so description here let's add description let's add the category and what else uh, price quantity the price the quantity and then we have the image so we have four images here so i'll just copy that just add some numbers at the end and a four something like that. one two three four and then finally we have the date and i forgot one more let's add one more column here the slag of course now the slag is like the url uh, user url in the users table because that's the identifier for our product so it's, it has to be unique okay so i think that does it now let's see what um so here instead of int for products i think you will never have to add because products are, are not like posts in a um, in a social website where there could be thousands of users and each one is posting their own thing so int is fine instead of big int that's over q so let's just use int right there and put this as primary index and auto increment must be on and then here user url we have variable character and it would be a good idea to use the same amount the same number that we used here which i have forgotten so let me give it a check in the structure that one is at 60 okay so let's put 60 so we don't waste space description um this is up to you let's put something like um maybe two uh, 200 that should do variable character and then variable character here for category and in category we set the limit to 30 so let's use that as well actually here the case is this um the category here we'll have to put the instead of the category name itself we have we want to put the number the category id at this point okay so here we'll use category id which will be int so let's put it back on int and remove the length now the reason we're adding int here is because if we change our category name and then we were saving actual names in this uh, products folder then they're going to be there's going to be a disconnect between the new name that we've renamed in the categories list and the categories that belong to your products so by adding a number instead we can still refer to the exact because the number will never change the id of the uh, the product id will never change so that would be uh, much better to use that okay so category and then the price now the price is a decimal so we're going to use uh, let's use uh, double for that then quantity int is fine image variable character so we're going to put a link in here so i think 500 characters should do it so let me do the same for all these images here right and let's make make sure that it's variable character Whoop. okay 
then date of course will be date time and the slug will be variable character so let's just put 100 just in case okay so this looks good auto increment primary key we have that so let us hit save and save so there are a couple of things in here that we'll need uh indexes because we will be using those to search for example this slug will be in the url so definitely we're going to need to use that to search for a particular product so let's add our index there okay goody goody we may need to uh, load things by date so let's put an index there sometimes you may want to search by quantity though not so much but uh, this could be useful in the admin section to order things by the number of quantity and the price as well could be uh, something you can use to load by in the uh, admin page the category we might need to search for that and of course we will need to search the product name so that's description and we will need to know which user has which products created which products so let's add an index there as well okay so pretty good so far so good this is all we need to get started on our from our database end so in the next video we'll see how to actually create some categories right in our admin section so i will see you in the next video